Oh, oh, okay. First off, look, uh, the long story short, that it's talking about the woman's hair is her covering that automatically refutes it when you just read the plain text of the passage. Um, th- that's that's just irrefutable. The second thing is, what do beards have to do in the significance of the body of Christ? Thanks. You know, were, were, were the Gentiles or the Jews in the New Testament ever uh, instructed by Jesus or the apostles to to have their beards make sure that they're there? Uh, was it? Can I address that? I'll dress it. No, first I want Lewis to answer the question, and then, you know, you can go next. Yeah, can I get my scripture real quick? Then I'll, we'll talk no, about it. no you, you can't. You have to address the question. Second Simmons 15 and 30. Can Once I again, you have to address the question. Last yeah. chance. I was saying, can I get my scripture first? Okay, no, you cannot. You, you have okay. to go ahead and address the question. What was the question? What is it? The question is, what do any of these kind of beard things, things like, what does it have to do with the body of Christ? What's its role? Okay. What's its significance? Okay. Did, was it taught by Jesus and the apostles? It gives you an incentive not to sin. The beard really? reminds you, when you look in the mirror, the beard reminds you not to sin. Your Frenchies and your zitzit and your border of the blue reminds you not to sin. Can you show okay. me and can you show me where this can you show me where this doctrine was being used to yeah. remind us not to sin? Yeah, like the question why why jump in the water if you don't want to get wet? Why dress like a harlot if you're a wholesome woman? Okay. Okay, I get that, but let me let me show you an example. Here is a proverb that I actually remember from Galatians that Paul used. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. You see how I got that from the New Testament scriptures? Okay, so show me that in context of beards. Do they ever do that with beards? I'm trying. I'm. I, I'm trying to figure. Well, oh, that's out. what Romans, Romans fifteen and four says. Things written a four time are written for our learning. Right, and what were the, what were those things that were written for our learning? Beards or Jesus? It wasn't. Well, anyway, I'm not even going to touch that because. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, like I said, it gives you incentive not to sin. How? It gives you, because when you look, that's number 15 says you're supposed to wear the border border blue in your friend or border purple. And but that's not what it means. To that's remind you, it's Romans chapter 15 to remind you of the law. But that's not Okay, friends, so the law, oh, wait a minute, time out. If, it, if it's to remind you of the law, then we already have in the New Testament where it, it says that one of the purposes of the law was to point us to our sin. Therefore, we don't need beards to do that. We have the law to, to point us to our sin. Right. Um, it says that a lot in the scripture. Matter of fact, it says the, the, uh, the, the well, strength of the law is this. sin. Every, every dollar you spend is a vote for what you believe in. Everything okay. you wear is about what you believe in. What? And the law itself points us to our sin. So we have the law to remind us of of, of our uh, of what sin right. is and all things like that. And so. friends are like the externalization of the law, a physical perspective. What? That that made no sense. Um, a diet you want to try? Oh, we got we got kicked off. Um, it's like I was saying, the law is the, the physical. It's the physical perspective of the law. Okay. okay, let me let me give you another example. I believe in Romans seven. It says, "Look, for example, um, uh, I would not have known coveting for the law, saying, Thou shalt not covet.'" See, it gave an example. That's Romans chapter the seven. example. The example. The example was uh, was a a moral kind of thing. So I'm looking for where does it say? Well, yeah. you know, if you want yeah. for me uh, uh, being beardless and not having a beard, it wouldn't remind me. It's, it, it doesn't do that. It, well, so you put your where an on. example you put in the New Testament does it say? Okay, this is the reason why we need to wear beards because they remind us and not sin. I, I haven't found it. See, every example that you're giving, you give from analogy. I give from actual scripture of when you, what they when point you out. Fringes, it's hard to light a cigarette when, when you have your fringes on. Really, it makes you think, makes you think twice. Really? Once you, once you see a cigarette, you want to like that. You want you want to you want to like that cigarette. You want to like that cigarette. You're gonna think really. You got your okay. Cigarette. Well, okay. Well, uh, Lewis, Lewis, once again, this is like can the third time that you get in there now. Can I can I say something? Please? You know what? I, go ahead. I'm going on mute. <laughs> I, I, you know, okay. I'm gonna try to give a scriptural answer. Okay. Now, one thing about the beard, it was most most definitely 
the scripture always, the law was the most definitely distinguished man from female. Um, that's why it says that a man should not pertain where things pertain to a woman. Am I in here? Mm-hmm. Okay. And now some may say that mean pants. Some may mean if you actually did the research, the first to wear pants were actually women. So we would know if we really were to get a deeper understanding of that, that would mean that a man should not cross dress. A woman should not dress like a woman att attempting to be womanly and a woman shouldn't dress like a man attempting to be manly. If we're just to get simple understanding. Mm -hmm. So the beard was that the man will be obviously masculine. Now, Sister Cherry brought up the fringes. The fringes was there to remind Christ, I mean, to remind the children of Israel of the law. When the, and that's why he made sure he put the border of blue, the border of blue represented that the laws, those fringes were the 614 laws. 13. And the border of blue, and the border of blue was to represent that these were heavenly laws. These were spiritual laws. These came from above. So when the children of Israel were to look down, and they would see their walk. These fringes was there to remind them of their walk, that they were to walk upright. Every time they looked down and saw those fringes, that represented their walk. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get into Matthew, when you get into Matthew 9 and 20, and it says, and behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Now, when we look at that meaning him is crass, Craspedon, and it means a margin that is specifically a fringe or a tassel. So Christ wore fringes. Now, fire, brother, fire. Okay, Christ wore fringes. So most definitely, we know that, and he walked so holy, he walked upright. We know he was blameless. We know he was sinless. So he said when they touched him in the garment, they were, she was literally touching the law, which was holy. But That's the right. law's no good. The law's no good if the man don't, if the man, if like what they said is not what's outside the man that destroys him, but what's in, but what comes out of him. So when, when she touched the hem of his garment, she said, hold on, who touched me? Now, everybody was touching him, but who touched him? Who touched him by faith? That woman with the hem of garment. So what we're seeing is faith meeting the law. We're seeing now there's an exchange. There's a transition going on in the kingdom even with that touch it the law does you no good without faith okay. so this is the whole thing christ being a, he had to he had to take on the law in every way so that when he hung on the tree when he hung on that tree he was literally nailed on that tree that means that law was being buried he became a curse for us but we know the curse was never in his flesh because he was blameless. He took on that law, which was what should have been life to us, became death to us. We never had the spirit to actually keep the law. And this is where the new covenant comes in. So really, if you have the Holy Spirit, that should be your fringes. To be your fringes. because uh, Okay, the there's, there's so many problems. Okay, there, there's so many oh, problems with problem. what you're, you're saying. Um, Can I say well, this? Hold on. I, uh, Brother well, hold just on. I'm just quick. It ain't going to take me long. Okay, um, go I'm, I'm humming in on, I'm targeting this. I took my uh, my my icon down for a reason. Okay. And you said that the the the, the fringes is to remind of uh, us of the law, right? That's what right. Okay. That's what the scriptures uh, say. I've been going <laughs> Let's see. Let me try this. Thou shall not murder. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall honor thy father and mother for thy days shall be long. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul, and even your strength. Thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, I just gave you six. Mm -hmm. Six. Now, mind you, I don't have any fringes on. I don't have no fringes on whatsoever. And I didn't do that just to show myself. I did that because I, I wanted to give you an example. 
I just recited six, and I could have went on further with the, com the, the, the commandments. And I remembered them. Those laws and it, it's, it's the few that I just recited, and I could go on more because, you know, Christ gave the law, the commandment about repentance and faith and, and et cetera. I remember, I remember them and I don't wear, I, I, I'm not, I don't wear, there's no, there's no fringes on my clothes. There, there, there's no fringes. Do y'all see any fringes? Do you see any fringes, Brother Surreal? No. No. And I, and I, I just recited those laws. I, I remembered them and I ain't got no fringes on. Those laws are written on my heart. Pastor Sean, am I crazy? I don't. I ain't, I ain't, I, didn't, I ain't got no, none. I even look at the bra. I ain't got no fringes, none. And I remember them. You're not crazy. No, I'm not I, crazy. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you said, said that. Yeah, I wanted to say uh, that. Because in 2 Corinthians 3, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if I got just walked in your kitchen, and if I did, good, because you Let's still have your pancakes. Yeah, go ahead and talk. <laughs> I'm checking again to make sure. You know, no. that I, maybe I saw there's, there's a reason. There's a reason I, that is, and there's a translation in in the uh, Bible oh. Gateway called the Voice. No friends is on the flip flop. Let me check the other one. No. <laughs> no. There's a there's a translation uh, in in the Bible Gateway of Second Corinthians three called the Voice, and I think it really breaks it down that a child won't hear. No. And it, and by the way, no. it's written by Jewish publishers, Messianic Jews. Okay. So if we get that and show that, maybe we can all come to another an understanding and come into one accord and get the thing done. Baby, you got on fringes. No. You got on fringes, huh? <laughs> okay. No. No, my husband ain't got on no fringes. No fringes for me either. No, no. I ain't got nothing on, but no. I do own a talit. I only wear it though on certain occasions. So, especially when I'm doing the woman with the issue of blood, like, brother, if I pronounce your name wrong, please forgive me. Adela. Adaya, yeah, it's all, it's all good. Everybody mispronounced it. It's good. Okay, okay. thank you. Adaya. Thank you, brother. Adai. So, so uh, you, I you give a, a, a great breakdown of certain portions. Yeah, you can't keep the law. Nobody could because the Bible said it's contrary to us. All right, now let's look at the Second Corinthians three, and it's written from a Jewish perspective. All right. Translated from a Jewish perspective, it's called the Voice. And the voice is V, and it's all in capital letters, that voice. You'll never, you can't miss it. Mm. Okay. I, I just, you know, I just, I, maybe I missed something. You know, maybe I missed the memo. How did, hey, I, but, hey, why that, why Pastor Sean looked that up. Are you, are you ready, Pastor Sean? I just want to let y'all know that this is what the scriptures say. Leviticus 15 and 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. 39, and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which you used to go. Now, Sister Cherry, he said that you won't go ahead, that you, your own heart and your own eyes. Why is that? Now, what's the principle in that? That's what I often look for when I look in the law, because understanding is the principle thing. Yeah, what I, is he I'll saying it. about? Uh, okay, uh, uh, let me just, uh, no, I, 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 I just want to say one thing real quick. So, so first off, there's just. Let me finish my thought real quick. I'm not saying, listen, if you guys would have let me finish sharing it out, I said that once you have the law in your heart, do you need friendships? That's what I was going to get to. 
But I but there is a justification for the fringes when Christ warmed. That's what I was getting to. So when he's saying, but he he said, remember all of the commandments, like because you guys say you, you you keep the moral law, and that's all you got to keep. No, Christ said that. Okay, hold on. Like, so let me hold on. Just just real quick, let me just address I, I, we everything just said. So Christ said that. Right, right. I, 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 let me just address everything you said. So, so, so first off, you know, and I keep on asking people the same question. You know, they keep on looking at Christ keeping the law like to a T, like a like a Jew should. I keep on asking people, why did Christ keep the law? And the answer is because Jesus said he would fulfill it. So obviously, you know, you, you have to do it. And of course, there's other things that he actually did uh, to fulfill the law, which means he actually taught you know, uh, his his own laws, which came from the father, which actually goes into prophecy. Don't want to get into that. Uh, another thing is Jesus was obviously prophesied to fulfill the law, to keep the law. So that's another reason why he did it. He never instructed his followers to do that. Why? Because, well, we're not Jesus. We're not prophesied to keep the law. We're not told to go and do that. Uh, another issue is, is that you said that this woman was touching the law and yet you actually read in the verse where Jesus said, who touched me? Now there's a difference between Jesus and the fringes he's wearing. There's a difference between Jesus himself and the law that he gave, you know, he, he is the Lord of the Sabbath. You mm. know, Jesus is not the law, you know, he's the law giver, just like, you know, Moses is. Um, so, you know, he's touching, you're saying that, that the woman is touching fringes, but yet Jesus is being acknowledged as the person being touched. You know, the woman is being acknowledged as being healed by Jesus, not the law, not the fringes that she touched. Uh, so, I mean, that that's basically clear in the scripture. Another thing is, is that you say, well, the fringes were obviously used to remind us of the law. Well, once again, you're using the old covenant. Not only that, you actually show that these fringe wearing practices were only taught to the Jews to keep out through keep throughout their generations. What about the Gentiles? We're in the new covenant. Do they keep fringes or only do the Jews keep them throughout their generations, especially if this is a part of the old covenant law? Now that there's a new covenant. Well, what are the stipulations? This is a part where people just don't like to think about. And this is also another reason why people like to do this thing called the renewed law. Kind of puts a fix to it. The only problem is you, you can't find that in scripture anywhere. And also, last but not least, to say that the Holy Spirit is like our fringes. One, once again, that is not anywhere in scripture. And it also downplays the following scriptures of what the Holy Spirit is said to do in our lives. Amen. Let me go ahead and give you an example. So it says that uh Brother, you do we do we, we do Spirit, recognize actually, symbology, yeah. we do rap, recognize symbology here though. I was symbolically speaking of the fringes. Then I mo I made it clear it was him. If you're gonna say that, that you're symbolically weird. speaking of fringes, then how are if you're gonna say that you're symbolically no, speaking of fringes symbolically represented the law. I went to Leviticus and, and at the same the time Right. And at the same time, we, we already squandered all that by saying, you know, that you end up saying, well, the Holy Spirit is our fringes. That is not found in Scripture. Now, let me show you what is found in Scripture of what the Holy Spirit is for brother, us. I this is what this is what it says here. It you says, says you understood the so Holy you Spirit. I just want to read this. Can see it, please. That's fine. All right. I, I'll just read it. It says the Holy Spirit helps us when we pray. Romans 8, 26. Thank you. He guides us. John 16, 3. He teaches us, John 14, 26. He speaks to us, Revelation 2, 7. He gives us inner strength, Ephesians 3, 16. He helps us be obedient, 1 Peter 1, verse 22. He frees us from the power of sin, Romans 8, 2. He convicts the world of sin, John 16, verse 8. He brings salvation and holiness, 2 Thessalonians 2.13. He identifies us as God's own, hmm. Ephesians 1.13. And he, he gives us access to the Father, Ephesians 2.18. I don't know if any fringes or book of the law will ever do more than what the Holy Spirit does 
But I, I think that, you know, um, that the Holy Spirit does more than anything that the old covenant was, was taught us to do. And that's what it shows what the Holy Spirit does. It does not say that the Holy Spirit is our fringes. Um, so, like I said, I hear all these things a lot. But when you just go ahead to what the scriptures point out about, you know, we have the Holy Ghost. It's not the Holy Ghost enough. It goes to my question. Is not what Christ given us enough. Right. We are called Christians. We're given Christ. But people want to be a part of the nation. They don't want to be a part of the church. You know, they don't want to be a part of the Jerusalem above. They want to be a part of the Jerusalem that we're going to take back the land and get the land back, even though Jesus said the meek shall inherit the earth. And we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth since we're going to be in Christ. It also says here that, well, you have the Holy Spirit. That gives us access to the Father. I don't know if fringes ever did that. I don't know if fringes ever ended up freeing us from the law of sin. It's like, well, you know, here is the gift of the Holy Spirit given to the church in Acts chapter two, who were only Jews at the time. But it's like, no, Brother, we want to fringes. We want to. We want to. No, time out, time out, time out, time out. What what we're saying is, I don't want the Holy Spirit. Just, just give me the fringes. It's like it's not what Christ gave is not enough to y'all. That's what it seems like. Wait, wait, wait. Amen. You read off everything everything that the Holy Spirit does, but what He does in, in John 14 is 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So he said, so I'm, I'm, so I'm drawing a parallel that the fringes were to remind the children of Israel of the law, and the Holy okay. Spirit is now to remind you of. And I, brother, I'm, I'm, I'm in this. I'm glad you said that because I'm here at Acts chapter two. Yeah, I see you Acts two. Hey, so well, can I ask a question real quick. Well, I mean, once again, like, well, there it is. So why even talk about fringes? Hold on, Wait a minute. Let's go ahead and talk about ideology. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, 4 real quick. And let's go with your ideology. Uh, and I'm going to change this. Lord, forgive me. And, <laughs> oh uh, and they were all filled with the fringes and began to speak with other tongues as the fringes gave them other. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You being, if you being simple, no, it don't. No, make no, no, sense. no. I'm not being you're simple. Using it, so simple. I mean, I anybody would. Again, you said the Holy sister, Spirit is the fringes. Sister, sister, so let's look at sister, it. And they were sister, all with the fringes and it's began the, to speak with other tongues. And, and, and the tongue. fringes gave them utterance. Are you crazy? The Holy I've Spirit never is heard. That you is. know, and. and you know, I've, I've never heard the Holy Spirit being referred to as fringes by any of the apostles. So in the oh, Old Testament, you have fringes. In the New Testament, you have the Holy Ghost. Why even mention fringes? Like, so, speaking, that, was, was, did, hold on, I'm asking I'm a question. Asking a question. Hold on, brother, 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 brother. Hold on. But, but, but what, 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 where did Jesus apply the fringes and parables? Where did the apostles apply fringes and parables? Like, they applied a lot of things. Hey, so, it's well, just... There is no place on, brother, in the New Testament on, I where you. Wait, no, wait, mate, wait, I hold swear, up, like hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. The gifts of Christ are not enough. Swear, it's so, let me put some. Let me put some Hebrew something on it. Let me put some. That, that's what, I, and I'll be satisfied. Let me, let me put some Hebrew seasoning on it. And all I'll be I need good. is all I need is under, all I need is thirty seconds. Yeah, go ahead, Pastor Sean. And can I go after all him? Right. Yes. Okay, all right. All the benefits of the crucifixion, the resurrection, the ascension, I keep asking this question. Is what Christ did not enough? Yes, it is for me. Okay, now he has sent the Holy Spirit. And when we get to 2 Corinthians 3, sister, in a little bit, after, after, um, after, um, Lewis says, what speaks his piece. Okay. Okay. All right. Second Corinthians three in the voice. I want, I want to say it simply because the first words of the first of the first verse going to really blow your mind. All right. Let me ask you a question real quick. For real. 
So real, what's okay. up? Did Axe two? That's why I'm more yield. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did Axe two That's fulfill Isaiah eleven? Okay. For so real, did Axe two fulfill Isaiah chapter eleven? What is it saying in Isaiah chapter eleven? It says that uh, the Most High said his hand a second time to recover those from Shinar and all those other places. Did Acts two fulfill that? Um. Yeah, I actually showed that in scripture. Remember, we walked through all the places that um, the Jews were, and they like you know came back to celebrate Pentecost. I showed so that they fulfilled, all came back. That fulfilled Isaiah eleven. I would say so. Yeah, they all came okay. back from those places. Okay. Okay. That's all. This acts. All right. All right. yep. I, I'm just trying to figure this out. How do you blaspheme fringes? But okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this chapter, at Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Oh and that's an unforgivable sin to blaspheme fringes. I'm the Lord. I'm just trying to figure this out. You but, know what? This actually reminds me of a parable Jesus used. He said, you know, you can't pour new wine into old, old wine skins. He said, you can't do that. Matter of fact, he said, you can't put a new pat or a new patch on an old garment, mm -hmm. you know, unless it actually destroys the garment or it destroys the old. You know, it's like if you try to pour the new into the old, it'll destroy the, the bottle. If you try to put the new patch on the old garment, it'll rip the old away. It seems like every time you try to match new to old, it just don't it, it just doesn't mix, you know, and even in Acts chapter two, it says that their accusers say, you know, they're filled with new wine mm. well no. maybe he was right but it wasn't the kind of wine that they were thinking hey, you know brother, and i don't know, you know it's fine like you guys are funny man because see now you guys will talk about that christ is our passover lamb but it, yep. was there literally a lamb hung on the cross but that's the 